Greetings, Pilgrims, and welcome back to another episode of the Polygon Pilgrimage, and today is the day you've all been waiting for. Today, we are getting into true multiplayer. So what you see on the screen here is I'm running the project in the editor, and then I'm also running a built version of the project. Now, if you don't know what that means, you've never done it before, not to worry. I'm going to step you through every single step. We're going to do it together. So first, I'm going to show you where we're going towards in the next couple of videos, and then I'm going to break it all down. I'm going to start from scratch together and add on to where you are now piece by piece. So you're going to get everything step by step. No worries. So first, I just want to show you, look, we've got two people in the scene. I can run over. And as you can see, when I look up and down, it's showing my motions to the other player. So this window here is the built version. And I can run around and you can see my character. There's a little bit of lag in the editor. You can see how it catches up there a little bit just because of the focus between the editor and this built application. But this works. You can take this project, you can zip it up, send it to your friends, and you unzip it. And as long as you're under that 20 count, you can all see each other. And don't worry, we're going to do some balance testing. We'll make sure that we have as many as we can in here. And I'll see how much I can get going on the screen and show you at a later time. But for now, we'll just work with two just to prove that there's another instance in the scene. And a couple of important things to note we're going to be looking at. How do we figure out that it tells the other character to show me where I'm moving properly? How do we tell it to tell us where to look and that we're looking up and down and moving, that we're rotating, playing our animations. You can see it plays the animations as I run. You can see it's doing that. Like again, it's a little choppy because of the editor. But uh, all of those things, we're going to talk about how Photon does that, how we're going to work with Photon to do that, and then also what are the things that we need to take into account to have that happen. Okay? So from here, I'm going to go ahead and do a little time lapse here and wipe and we're going to go back to square one and we're going to start all this process together. Okay, so I'll see you in a minute. Okay, so here we are all reset here and we're back in our player setup scene. This is where we left off last time. So I just hit play, which just recapped where we are now. So we have our character and we did the IK, we can aim our weapon and we have the gravity again. Thanks for pointing out the fix. There we go. So we're all set here, but we're not actually in multiplayer yet, right? So we are connected to the pun servers and we're into our lobby, but we're not actually with someone else yet, right? So let's go ahead and talk about how we're gonna do that. This is gonna be a couple steps. So just fair warning, it's gonna be a few videos because I want to make sure that we go over every single step and explain to you what it's doing and why. So you'll be more knowledgeable, knowledgeable in the future because it's gonna only get more complicated from here, all right? So we need to make sure we understand these core fundamental things really, really well. All right, so the concept of putting players together in a match is called matchmaking, right? We're going to make a match. We're going to say this game is going to be these people versus these people, okay? So where does the responsibility lie in our project for that? Well, that's going to be if we go to our scenes, pun, we're going to go to our player lobby, which is this. So ultimately, we're going to have all this other stuff. You know, we'll get there and we're going to have our characters showing up here with their outfits and all that. So it is the responsibility of our player lobby here to say, this is where you're going to configure what kind of a match you want to go into with our drop down here. And then once you've configured that, then you click play and say, now go ahead and create or find a match for me, whatever it is that we do. So here's where we're going to do that kind of stuff. So we're going to need two things. We're going to create a new object here and we're going to create a script and put it on that object. And I'm going to tie this button to fire an event from that object. Okay. So let's right click in our hierarchy over here and we're gonna say create empty. And I'm gonna click here on the three dots and say reset transform. So it just puts it at zero, zero, zero. It's not really important, but for all of our manager objects, you'll see I do this repeatedly, so get used to it. <laughs> so this we're gonna be calling, just for now, we're gonna call this our matchmaking object. So matchmaking, just like that, doesn't really matter, but if you wanna follow along exactly. Now let's go to our assets. We'll go to our scripts. And we're going to create a new script in here. So I'm going to right click and say create C sharp script. And just like that, match making. First M is capital, the rest is lowercase. Let's go ahead and bring that up. I'll double click it and it will launch now. Here we go. These are all the other scripts I've been working on, so don't worry about any of that. Match making, and here it is. So I'm going to copy and paste chunks into here just to save a little bit of time in the video, but I'll explain what they do, okay? First and foremost, our using statements at the top. We need to make sure that we're using the pun and the photon real time. 
So I'm going to paste that. You'll see it update. There we go. So make sure it looks like this. System.collections, collections generic, Unity engine, using photon.pun, using photon.realtime. This means now we're, we're having access to Photon's code, so we can use their code, right? So we do need to change this mono behavior here. So we're going to inherit from mono behavior, but specifically we're going to inherit from mono behavior pun callbacks, just like that. Capital P, capital C, no capital B. Okay, pun callbacks. This means now the pun callbacks are I call a function of pun and it gives me something back. It gives me information back. The callback. You can say hey. Let me call back to this and say, hey, what does that do? Oh, it gives me some information. Cool. Now, we need our variables. So again, I'm going to copy and paste this little chunk over here. So right at the top here, make some space. I'm going to put our variables in here. So we're going to use regions from now on. Uh, we have we have in the past and have been really consistent about it, but I'm going to try to be more consistent about this using a region called variables. The reason being, if you type just like this, hashtag region space and then whatever you want to call it, and then you put your stuff in here like you normally do. We'll go over this in a second. Then you do hashtag n region. Now you see you get this little thing right here with a little minus. If I click that, it'll collapse it all up. This is super handy for when you have huge bits of code, which we will, and we want to collapse things down to say that this part is good. It's solid. I don't have to touch this anymore. Let me collapse it just so we can see better in here. So this is a handy little trick you can use for all your projects. So we will wrap this in a region. That's the proper term. So this is a variables section. So we're gonna have a public static matchmaking instance, just like we've done before. This is gonna be a standalone, one of a kind thing that we're gonna be able to access from other objects by calling matchmaking.instance. You'll see that in a second. And then we're gonna have this public byte. We haven't gone over this before, but this is we're getting into networking and passing data, streams, and that kind of stuff. So just know that byte is kind of like a number, and we're gonna use this for our max players to say this is the total number of players we're gonna allow in this match, okay? So next up, we're going to do, let's do two sections at a time. So we'll do our awake and our start. So I'm gonna overwrite this start section here. So if I just paste, you'll see, here's what I did. Another region called unity methods, and we're gonna have awake, and we're gonna do instance equals this, meaning instance is this guy right here. You'll see it highlights here when I double click here, meaning that there's only one of a kind, there's only one matchmaking, and it is the one that this script, this copy of the script on this object is the only one. In our start, we're going to call these two things photon network dot automatically sync scene equals true, meaning please go ahead and automatically sync things up for me. And then don't destroy unload this dot game object, meaning the game object, that matchmaking object we just made, we put this script on it. Please don't destroy this when you load the next scene, bring it with you. Okay? This way this kind of goes with us and we can make changes along the way. Perfect. Okay. Now, after that, we are going to do an end region and it looks like it didn't come with, so that's fine. I'll just type that in here. So we'll do hashtag end region. There it is. So that will close up our unity methods and we can just minimize that. There you go. We'll minimize the variables. We're moving right along. Now we don't actually need update right now, so we're going to get rid of that. But right here on line 27 here, we're going to start adding some more stuff. So the next region, I'm going to copy that whole region. And then again, don't worry, we'll go over it. So I'm going to paste it here. So this region uh, looks like I got too much. There we go. So this region is called public methods. And we're going to have two methods, really. Quick match and create room on click. Okay, so let's talk about what they do. I'm going to save really quick to see if I can get this, all these squigglies to go away. Let's, I've been my way there. There we go. Okay. That won't go away, but it won't bother us either. So for quick match, this is just a really quick, we want to test, throw us into the same room with everybody else so we can just see that things work. Okay. This is not the official, we're on a team, you're on a team. No, no, no. This is just really dirty. This is just get us in there and there, there you are. So we're going to call two functions photon network dot join random room. And there's only going to be one room. So you're randomly going to pick the same room. Okay, photon network that load level three. What does this three mean? What is that? Does it make any sense? Well, if we hover over it, you'll see that it tells us. Basically, if you read all this, it's going to say, "Hey, we're going to load the level that you pass in, and that level you pass has to be in the build settings, and it is the third indice." Now, this means remember, most of these indices count from, from a zero base. Meaning, if I go back here. 
let's take a look. I'm going to go to File. Oh, it's going to compile the code we just saved. There we go. Build Settings. In my Build Settings, I have 0, 1, 2, 3. So it's going to load number 3, which is our game scene. Okay. So remember, we had this already set up in order from previous. And if you don't, make sure it looks like this. And it's pretty easy to do. You can drag and drop scenes from your scene folder right into this window. And it must be in this order. Player login, loading screen, player lobby, game scene. That must be 0, 1, 2, 3. Because we will load the next index. And when we load the third index, we're loading the game scene. Cool. That's all set up. Awesome. So this means we're going to photon, join a random room, and then load that level. Perfect. Now, create room on click. This is going to tell us that when we call this function, we create a room, it's going to call, it's going to create a room for us when we click. Pretty simple. So string room name is room underscore photon network dot time and then underscore players. What this is going to do is this is going to give us a string that looks kind of like this. Let's say room underscore, it'll have some time like, what's the current time for me? 2, 11, right? And then it's going to say underscore players right so this is going to say how many this is going to say players not the number of players but it just gives you a room room 211 right that kind of thing so this is going to give you just a name so that it's unique then when we create a room we need to give it a couple of things first we need to say what are the options for that room so we're going to create a new room options now these next three lines here we're going to be adding to that room options so think of room options as like a piece of paper and you're going to send somebody to the store and you want them to buy certain things for you from the store, right? This is like your order. So for your room options, you're saying, oh, I want it to be this and this and this. And then you pass it to the room option, the create room, and it's going to take those options and fulfill that order. Okay. So our room options are is visible true, meaning it's not a hidden room. It's not a private room. People can actually find it. Is open means not only can they find it, but they can actually join it. And then max players is equal to the max players, that byte that we put up here in the variables, right? So that's a number of players that we want to be available to join that room, the max number of players. Then we call photon network create room. And these options are, you can see here, room options, null, uh, room name is null. So we're passing the first null there, says string room name. We're not going to give it a name. We don't care. The next one, room options, is the room options we just made. Cool. And the very end here is... A typed lobby. We don't have to worry about that right now. We just pass in a null. So there you go. So we're just creating a room and we're giving it these options and saying null to the rest of the thing. We don't care. And now it'll be done. There we go. So that's all we need to do here. So we'll save that script. We'll minimize this for now. And now if we go to our matchmaking object. You'll see there's nothing here. We can either click here and search for matchmaking and add the script this way. Or you could click and drag it from here to here. Now, for our testing purposes later, I'm going to put a four in here to say a maximum of four players. Just so we have two teams and a partner on each team at maximum, just to test some of the other stuff way down the road from now. Okay? But for now, we are good. We're good. So if we save, let's go ahead and test it, and we'll see what happens. I'm going to show you what happens. Okay? So let's go to our scenes folder. And we have to go back to the beginning, so we're going to go to our player login. And if you remember with our testing, uh, it will save our preferences so it already knows my name. So I didn't have to type anything in and click login. It's just loading right in. And now this is our fancy little loading screen as it loads some of the things and it connects us in the background and it should take dump us out to our player lobby. So here we are with the player lobby. But if I click play, nothing happens, right? Because we haven't hooked anything up yet and the matchmaking hasn't hooked us up yet. So let's go ahead and take care of that. So we'll go back to our player lobby and we need to actually hook up what this is going to do for us to this button. So we'll open up the lobby, pardon me, open up the canvas main menu and we want to open our play menu and this one right here, this BTN for button play game. That is this button. So when you click that button, then you're clicking this. Now if I drop this down, on click is empty. So I'm going to click plus to say I want to add a new thing to happen when I click the button. And I'm going to click and drag my matchmaking object and drop it right here. Boop. There we go. Now, you see this lights up and says, okay, well, I'm not going to do anything yet. So you drop down and say, okay, I want the matchmaking script. That's what this is. You could do game object to turn it on or off. You could do transform to move it around. 
I want to say matchmaking. And if we look over here, remember we made that function called quick match. There we go. So now when I click this button, the on click is going to call this object's script called matchmaking and call the function quick match. Awesome. So let's go ahead and save that. And I don't know if this will work from here, so let's just make sure that we'll test thoroughly from the beginning. It doesn't take that long, and we want to make sure that we're correct. So this will launch, and you can see here, by the way, that do not destroy our load. That's what these objects are here that get added in. See, we're bringing our launch manager with us from the beginning, and then we'll be bringing our matchmaking object with us further once we add that into the mix. See, there he is. Don't destroy our load, matchmaking. Now that button is connected. So now if I hit play, let's see what happens. Okay, so it has done something, but you notice how it says display one, no cameras rendering. Well, that's weird, but let's look over here. We are in the game scene. So we did load into the game scene. So technically our connection is loaded into that space. Now, if we were to launch a separate, se separate, separate, pardon me, instance of this, we wouldn't be able to see anything because right now we're just connecting, but there's no actual other characters there with us. We don't have another player. We don't have cameras. We don't have the animations. All that so that's going to be the next step that we're going to do okay so let's go ahead and stop this here now to do that next step is going to be a little, little bit of effort here so we might just call it good for today and go into the next video but don't worry these are going to be coming out very rapidly now I have like three or four or five of these lined up and we're going to get into some really cool visual stuff but for today I wanted to get you to this point and I want you to really understand what's happening because that's going to be the most important thing is to really thoroughly understand what's happening and why, because it's going to get a lot more complicated from here on out. Okay. So I'm going to call that good for today. For this video, we'll keep it a little bit shorter. We got ourselves in there. We got our matchmaking script made. We got it attached to our button. We're ready to go. We're going to start making some other changes. We have two more scripts to write and we have some changes we need to make to our character. But once we do that, we'll be golden and we'll be able to run around. And then it's now we start adding layers to things. Okay. So thank you so much for joining me. I hope you guys have enjoyed. If you have any questions, please don't feel uh, feel free. Don't hesitate and feel free to um, leave a comment in the video. Ask in the um, help channel and the Discord. Thank you guys so much for all your kind attention and all the love and support. We're reaching 10,000 pretty soon, and that's just amazing. That just blows my mind. So thank you so much. Hope you enjoy. we got a lot more coming, so I'm going to go ahead and end today and get, get on the next stuff for you. So until next time, guys, keep practicing. Get better, and I'll see you next time as the pilgrimage continues.